Hello! Today's stories come from r slash I don't work here, lady. We have two stories today. A bit slim this week, but luckily the sub just had a best of all time contest, and there's some winners I have never heard. First up, this isn't a dog daycare at all. A while back, I was working in an office that allowed dogs. It was an open floor plan, and since customers never came into the office, we kept the dog's food and water bowls right by the front door, just because it was the most convenient space, and no one else would see them but us who worked there. Of the six of us who worked in the main office area, I was the only one who didn't have a dog, no pets policy at the apartment, and always felt horribly left out. To make matters worse, across the way was a doggy daycare. One day, a very frantic woman came in, and she had an absolutely massive basset hound with her. Usually, the only people who came into the office were associates who had appointments with someone working there, but it was rare they brought their dogs. She ran up to me and said, Do you work here? And I said, Yes, how can I help you? She said, I wasn't sure if you took walk-ins, but I read online I could just drop them off. I tried to call, but no answer. I didn't know what she was talking about at that point, and I said, Come again? Who did you call exactly? Thinking if I could just saddle her off to whoever she came to see, I wouldn't have to decipher her problem. She said, Well, it doesn't matter now. Look, something urgent's come up, and I really need to leave him here. Here's his food he likes, and I'll be back in a few hours, and... At this point, I wasn't thinking of the doggy daycare. I thought maybe she was a friend of someone here. I said, Well, all right. Can I get your name, please? She said her name, and then asked if I needed her to sign anything, and I was so confused at this point, I just said, Why would you need to sign something? And she left almost immediately. So I took Otis, the dog, to the back and showed him to my coworkers, and no one knew the woman or dog. I was worried she wouldn't come back, but at the same time, my wish for an office dog had been granted. And Otis was supremely chill. All he did all day was lie around and drool onto his own ears. I just freshened him up every now and then, took him out every couple hours, and he was happy as a clam on a big cushy dog bed we thankfully had an extra one. He just loved attention from anywhere he could get it. At the end of the day, the woman, thank goodness, came back. She said, thanks, you're a lifesaver. How was he? And I said, he was a champ. And was about to say, but why is he here? When she said, that's a relief. Most kennels say he gets anxious around other dogs. I heard you operated at a much higher capacity. I was thrilled to see you had so few clients in the room at one time. So how much do I owe? And that's when I realized she thought we were a dog daycare. Now, I probably should have corrected her, but I loved my day with the office dog, and I did want to get paid for supervising this strange dog all day. I just threw out the number that sounded fair and appropriate. That'll be $20, I said. She replied, really? In this very high tone. I couldn't tell if I'd overshot or undershot, but she paid me and left. My coworkers were laughing hysterically when they realized what had happened, and we thought it would just be a good story for the future. But the next week, she came back. She said we were so much more affordable and less overcrowded than her other place that she was happy to use us. I was glad for the company, so just took him. I didn't think there was any way she couldn't have at least some idea we weren't a dog daycare. The whole ordeal was so strange, I just figured, don't question a good thing. I was much younger and dumber then. Not long after, Otis started getting dropped off too, sometimes even three or four days a week. I was in heaven. He was such a love, and he made fast friends with the delivery guys and visitors. One day, we took our office Christmas card photo, and Otis was over that day, so we included him. In a Santa hat, it was pretty great. But it turns out Otis's owner was friends with one of our clients who I guess happened to have the card out on her table or was kind enough to display it alongside her other holiday cards. Because one day Otis's owner came in holding the card and walked up to me and said, I can't even believe I'm asking this, but is that my dog in this photo? This isn't a dog daycare at all. This is just an office, isn't it? She said it with a note of surprise, as though she was looking around and putting it all together for the first time. No coincidence that this was the first time she wasn't in some crazy rush either. She was like, then who are all these other dogs? And I explained. I was terrified she was going to demand her money back or worse, take some sort of legal action against us for misrepresenting ourselves as a dog daycare business or complain to corporate. Instead, she basically said, why didn't you ever say anything? And I explained, we just really liked having Otis around. She stopped for a minute and seemed to be thinking and said, is that right? 
And I said yes and told the story of how I was the only one in the office without a dog, so love the company. She seemed a little flummoxed or hesitant, understandably, because the whole thing was so weird. She turned to my coworker and asked if I was telling the whole truth. I don't know why she thought my coworker, also a stranger to her, was any more trustworthy than me, but hey, strange times. Coworker backed me up. So she said, Well, I wish you'd said something sooner. Could have saved me a lot of embarrassment with my friend back there. All right, I have to get going. See you at four. And she left Otis. I couldn't believe it. I said, So he can stay? And she replied, Where else could I find someone to watch him one on one all day for $20? And off she went. Otis stayed my office dog until his family moved away. Luckily, right around the same time, I took a new job. With all this time sitting around doing nothing, thought it was as good a time as any to tell that story. I thought this was the cutest. I think this is a great example of defaulting to assuming that everyone is well-intentioned, resulting in a win all around, especially for Otis. Let's check out the comments. There are more details from OP, and they are sure to make you smile. OP shared, To add to the wholesomeness, I can share that as we got to chat with her some, once it was all out in the open, she'd tell us how she'd never get tired of making jokes about it to people. Like, I've got to pick Otis up from work at around four. And they'd all ask, what do you mean? Is he a service dog? And she'd say, nope, he's an accountant. She once went so far as to take a non-believer on the drive with her and walk him into our office, then walk out without him. She was just beside herself cracking up as she explained to us the joke she was playing. We could see her friend's puzzled, shocked reaction from the car as she emerged without him and got a kick out of it too. He'd never want to get up to leave. I think he just never wanted to get up. And without fail, every time she got him, she'd say, What's the matter, buddy? Long day at the office? And laugh hysterically. OP further shared, I think she just knew this is the complex with the dog daycare and was walking along the plaza, looking in, so stopped at the first place with lots of food bowls and dog beds. I also thought she must at least suspect we weren't a real dog daycare, but when it was revealed, she seemed genuinely surprised. Our next story is, I hope he wanted decaf. I know most posts here are rather short, but I'm apparently incapable of telling a short story, so this is going to be long. Plus, it needs some background. Some background. I work in a rather specialized area of forensics. Officially, I'm employed by Police Scotland, but they tend to let other law enforcement agencies, universities, etc. borrow us from time to time. A lot of the time, it's for consulting work or guest lecturing, but sometimes we're sent to teach training courses. About 18 months ago, I was asked to lecture at a training course for some of the criminal investigation department higher-ups in an English police force. It was the first time I'd done anything like it, and I was crapping myself. I met with the conveners and other officials for dinner the night before my first day, and after dinner and drinks, I was dropped back at my hotel. So to set the scene, it's about 10 p.m. I'm all dressed up in my evening wear, and I'm sitting at the bar in the hotel lounge. The place is dead. It's just me and the barman, so I've taken off my heels and am unraveling my hair, having just ordered a hot chocolate. The barman asks if I want mini marshmallows on my hot chocolate. Yes, of course, I want mini marshmallows on my hot chocolate. No, I don't mind waiting while you run to the kitchen. So I'm sitting there trying to trick my phone into connecting to the hotel's Wi-Fi when Angry Man walks in. He stomped into the room and slammed his fist down on the bar about three feet from me and barked out one word, coffee. I didn't know it, but apparently that attempt at communication was aimed at me. A fact I learned a moment later when Angry Man moved right up next to me, bent over me so his face was practically in mine, and barked out again, coffee. In an attempt to get away from the screaming coffee man, I slipped off the bar stool, putting it between the two of us. Extremely confused and more than a little terrified, it didn't immediately occur to me that he thought I worked there. Heck, it wasn't even registering that he wanted a coffee. He was just repeating it the same way a toddler does when they learn a new word but don't entirely know what it means. I'm going to blame the confusion, fear, and tiredness for my completely moronic response, which was to parrot the word back at him. Coffee? To which he replied, coffee, and he slammed his fist down on the bar again. This time, I noticed that he was actually throwing down money. My brain suddenly came back online. Oh, hey, the barman should be back in a sec. He, get me a coffee now. Oh, four new words. Progress. I'm sorry, mate. I don't work here. Now he was shouting. You effing lazy liar. Do you think I'm effing stupid? Yes, actually, but I'll be keeping that to myself. He went on. 
get off your effing phone and get me my coffee. I really don't cue rant about me being the only person in the lounge, so of course I must work there. And I was just being lazy. And did I take him for an idiot? All while I'm slowly backing away from the bar so he can't pin me between it and the bar stools. Then he throws in this. Do you have any idea who I am? Do you have any idea how important I am? I never got to find out how important this guy thought he was. Instead, Angry Man's friend came wandering in. He took one look at me, pretty much cornered by Angry Man, who was now screaming about how he'll make sure I never work again while I'm trying to calmly tell him to back off, and he tries to intervene. He took Angry Man by the shoulders and moved him back away from me while asking him what was going on. This stupid witch is refusing to serve me. I really don't work here. Angry Man's friend cut in. She doesn't work here. Let's just all try to calm down. There was a few moments of Angry Man's friend trying to calm Angry Man while he ranted about getting me fired until two barmen arrived, one of them with my hot chocolate. The presence of the three men distracted Angry Man enough for me to grab my shoes and escape with my chocolatey goodness. As I left, I could hear him demanding to speak to a manager. The next day, after being introduced to a lecture theater full of high ranking criminal investigation department officers, I stood and walked to the podium only to be greeted by one guy in the audience laughing hysterically. I just sort of froze, trying to figure out the joke. Did I have food on my face? Was my shirt on inside out? A quick check confirmed that no, I'd managed to addle that morning. A few other people began to chuckle as this guy struggled to get a hold of himself. As he regained control, he pointed to his left, where a very red-looking angry man was sitting. I think it was the sheer relief that he wasn't actually laughing at me that caused me to open my mouth and say to Angry Man, Oh, did you get your coffee in the end? He walked out and I didn't see him for the rest of the course. Oh my gosh, so good. This story could not have had a better ending. I have to say I was hopeful it would go this way with Angry Man being confronted with his idiocy, but it so rarely does. I love that his colleagues and friends also made a point of calling him out. There's some more sass from OP in the comments. Let's check them out. You're wrong, 11 said. So to my understanding, that man was law enforcement? OP replied, yep. I'm not going to give his rank, but he wasn't exactly a police constable. Nuclear Swan said, scary that this level of maniac is high up in law enforcement. OP replied, you can get some right idiots high up in law enforcement who like to throw their weight around, but I think that's probably true in most industries. Power does weird things to people. Polygonic said, at least in the end, you found out who he was and how important he was. He surely seemed to want you to know. OP replied, yes, the not knowing would have kept me up at night. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.